Welcome back everyone to episode 24 of Let's Play Rule the Waves as Germany. Unfortunately, I had a bit of a recording mess up, hiccup, and a few months were cut off. I just, um, well, unfortunately it happened. And the most unfortunate thing about those four months is because we had like a year or year and a half of nothing happening for a long time. But if I go into research, we can see that I had double reduction gears the USA offered to sell me and then on the next turn they offered to sell me I we also advanced it researched advanced weight saving there might have been other things that we researched if they were if there were anything else they weren't on weren't that important the main thing is we got all or nothing armor USA actually offered to buy us um, sorry offered to sell us all or nothing armor which is crazy because it could be something we end up using against them but so finally <laughs> one of the other nations took pity on our yeah our sad plight and they actually offered to sell it to us so that means we're going to jump into dreadnought design let's auto design some kind of dreadnought i think we have quality zero yeah i like 16 inch i have a name in mind because this is this is germany's final ship so, what do we want to name her? I think... What? Germany? Yeah, the Deutschland. It has to be the Deutschland, because this is um, the peak of the German naval ingenuity. Everything, we're going to pour everything into this ship. Let's go to 40,000. I like that. Nice even number. Um, we have a little bit of space. Why? Okay, we. I think... The reason that I'm going to do this, I, I like 6 inch guns, they're much better. Um, at close range, I mean, I have to scroll all the way down to 5 to do that. It would be nice if they had a gun data button for the secondary. But So if we're going to be fighting cruisers at range, the 5 inch guns aren't going to be incredibly effective. Because at, you see, at about their max range, which is going to be the max range of other cruisers too, but... Um, we don't have that much penetration, and if we were to go up to 6 inch guns, even though they're quality zero, the penetration is significantly higher. Typically we see 2, 2.5 for cruiser um, armor, so we can see that we probably are going to penetrate a lot better with 6 inch guns from max range, around 12,000. However, <clears throat> if we want to use these side guns for um, discouraging destroyer runs, or even for discouraging light cruiser runs, because the five inch guns are very effective at close range. I mean, within 5,000 yards, they're gonna be penetrating even heavy cruisers. <laughs> Excuse me. So, main reason I wanna switch between the two is, look at the weight drop. We're at 2,000, 2,100, and it drops us down to 1,500. That's a really significant weight drop. Um, you could even, I guess you could always say the same about all these things. See, like 400 to 3, um, 4 to 3 does not have that big of a drop. This is huge from 5 to 4, and this is again huge. Whereas 6 to 7 is actually less than 5 to 6, and I find that strange. Anyway, um, it, it, maybe that's a case to be made about using 7 inch guns here. Um, and then putting tertiary guns on? <laughs> Right now we have a lot of space, and we're actually going to probably end up with a little bit more space. I think belt 13.5 is more than sufficient. Probably we can even go down to 13. How much is that? Uh, okay, let's just take a look at things in terms of armor. But first of all, before we do any of that, let's get this back up to 16, because that's what we will actually be using. And we took a look. Let me just take a look at what 7 inch is. So the 7 inch guns are significantly larger ranged. The problem with them is that they have a harder time hitting destroyers, which means we absolutely would need tertiary guns. <laughs> Although technically we would get we would get director guns on this, so that would make it a little easier to hit. Ho hum, it's hard to say. It's really hard to say. I think I'm still gonna stick with the five inch guns and just an overwhelming number. So we'll be getting ten five inch gun broadsides off, which is fantastic. You assume that some of those are just going to hit and do a lot of damage. Okay, so let's go down to 13 inch for our belt. 
we need all three of our torpedo protection because <laughs> that's what I'm most worried about with this guy. DECA 3 is probably sufficient. What is our... Si um, shoot. I was going to say what do our 16-inch guns say, but... Now what do they say? Okay, so at 20,000, they're going into 4 inches of deck. So that probably convinces me that 3.5 deck is going to be what we want. Now, if we get to close range, which is certainly going to happen, it doesn't look like any amount of armor is going to matter. Um, in order for us to get, like, 16-inch guns are just going to penetrate any amount of belt armor you have. <laughs> Let's even see, like, what 14-inch guns does. Can we pretend to protect against 14-inch guns? No. No, just no amount of belt armor is really going to help as soon as you get better 14-inch, 15-inch guns. So let's look at 15 because this is quality negative 1. Yeah, you can see even now, basically my belt armor will only um, take effect at max range, and that's when um, they'll probably be hitting our deck anyway. So armor is kind of not very effective. It's better, it looks like it's just much better to have better armament than armor, or really more accuracy. So we'll be focusing on those things. Okay. Now, deck on the other hand, I, I think it's okay to go to 3.5. It is quite costly, but I think it's worth it. And we always want to make sure we sure up our conning tower. Let's do a little moon max. This is 19. This next one is 19. That one's 20. So somewhere between 17, let's see, is this 19? Yes. And this is 20. So 19, 19. 16 is probably fine. Turret armor of 14.5. Yeah, I, I think that's fine. I'm wondering even if belt of 13 inch is too much. Because maybe we should sacrifice a little bit of belt, which is not so important. I mean, obviously it's important, but you've seen that <laughs> almost nothing, we, there's almost nothing we can do against the ships that are going to do damage to us. Hmm. Hmm. Well, I like the turret top at 5 inch. That means that basically those are impenetrable from distance. So that's fantastic. What I kind of want to do is get a, another turret on here, to be honest. Or maybe I should just bring these up to 3 each. It, it's quite expensive, but this gives us a much more potent broadside. And it also allows us to attack head on and rear. I kind of like this. I typically do exactly what um, the original design showed, that three and then the superimposed ones get two. I don't think decreased guns is working. Yeah, it's not, but... Um, okay, let's think about this one other way before we decide. What if we get the superimposed and the aft superimposed and we do double, but then on top of that, we have a very strange <clears throat> midship Got, um, turret, which is, yeah, let's say a, a double as well. Now, this is 1543 for a total of 12 guns. 15, 43. And this is cheaper for 12 guns. Okay, well, that's very good to know. So I was looking at how much negative we went, and you're more negative to get the turret in, so even the superimposed turrets, it's better just to increase. And you know, we did get the decreased rate of uh, fire penalty for the quad turrets. If we wanted, we could go crazy, but I think this is going to be enough with 16 inches. We'll get a good 12, 12 inch. At, at the very least, we'll always be firing six of them. Okay, good. Then we get plenty of, plenty of 5 inch turrets. Two torpedoes. In fact, if we wanted to go, you know, a little bit crazy, <laughs> we could actually put on torpedo mounts on the sides. Where I, I, I'm trying to figure out why this is so expensive. Last time it wasn't as expensive. I was fooling around with it on camera because I expected it to be recording. But anyway, so let's try to drop down. Oh, let's drop down secondaries a ton. I'm probably okay with 4.5 for our secondaries. And maybe I'm okay with 4.5. Let's look at gun data. So this will only penetrate 4 from a max range. Let's put the turret top to 4.5. I'll feel pretty safe about that. So 14.5, 4.5, 4.5 for our other secondaries. Got the all or nothing armor. 
We're really close to a functional ship. Unfortunately, I wanted a little bit more ammo as well. Hmm. Where do we make up the difference here? I guess we'll have to just go down to 14 for turrets. And there, we have a little bit extra. Now one? No, we can't even get one round of ammo. I don't see anything that we were willing to sacrifice though, because, hmm, all these things are pretty important. And I do want to have a little bit of um, extra leftover tonnage, unused, just to keep these things floating. Hmm. Okay, well, I think that the, let's just call this ship complete as it is. And we could actually get four, <laughs> we could actually get four levels of torpedo protection. It's only 200. Hmm. That's a very interesting question. Because we're not really tonnage restricted here. It's just money that's going to cost us to do that. What if we just go up to 4,100? Then we can also get 95. Oh, we can get 100 even. Yeah, that's. Uh, let's do that. Why not make these the best of the best? And just for fun, maybe we can add an F and G. Nope, that for some reason put us over the top. <laughs> Okay, the top F and G are here, which I didn't want anyway, so let's delete those mounts and re-add them back as H and I with three. Perfect. Good. So now we have <laughs> midship <laughs> torpedo launchers, three on top. So these uh, battleships are really everything. We don't expect them to get into but um, torpedo battles with people, except... Sometimes at night, that's just what happens. And now I won't be as afraid, because I'll have great torpedo defense, and I'll have a little torpedoes myself. So these are really just everything. These are your Uber ship. Uber ship for Uber Deutschland. <clears throat> okay, great. Unfortunately, I didn't get the higher speed that I was hoping to get. Um, I was hoping to go 22, 23. I just don't see any way of making that happen. What if we went up to 42? Is it possible to get... Okay, well, let's do this then. Let's try to get to, oh, 23. Okay, perfect. You know what? I think I'm perfect with all of this. When I see two left over, even though I talked about having a little space left over for advanced director, they probably won't even need it. We'll give it to them, sure, but we can always decrease the rounds per gun because at that point, again, they'll be hitting so quickly that they shouldn't need the extra ammo. Great, so there's the Deutschland, she's probably Extremely expensive, but we got the budget for it, we'll pretend. So, give us a Deutschland, which will cost another 9 million, and <laughs> we will quickly see our budget evaporate. I want a lot of these, though. Oh boy, so we only have about 10 turns before these are... <laughs> and by that time, these things should all be built. So, we're really going to be focused on budget from now on. I will sacrifice even a lot of prestige for more budget. You can see that the private shipyard is not really, ah, well that's unfortunate, but private ship construction doesn't really help us now. We're, we're more like, I think, cost limited or sanity limited almost. It's kind of stupid to build 45,000, 47, I mean it's not stupid, it's fine, but it doesn't, it's unnecessary, maybe, I should say. And I cannot figure, I was looking at this off camera, I mean, I was looking at it on the previous recording, which is glitched, but I don't know why my unrest is going up. I've checked in all the places where I have, I mean, they were talking about the budget being too high, that people were protesting because the budget's too high, but I don't have any control over that. <laughs> so what am I going to do? I, I mean, do they mean that I have too high funds? Is that what they're complaining about? Because, yeah, we'll quickly change that. In fact, here, I'll show you one way of getting it even lower. We'll build yet another um, Deutschland class. And with these, I, won't, I will not fear taking on anybody in the world. Okay, good. <clears throat> Let's just make sure that we don't have any ships that are going to go obsolete anytime soon. 
So just sort by sorting my class. Well, we already have two that are obsolete. I've completely forgot about these guys. And we still don't have better 13 inch guns. So we'll just wait a little bit longer. I'm really hoping that the 13 inch guns come soon. Oh, but now that we have all or nothing armor, okay, yeah, and now that we have a lot of destroyers, hmm, if we send an expeditionary force to restore order, there's a chance we can take it over as a colony. Oh, tensions with Italy, well, by all means. This is tension, oh, let's do it. Aw, oh, man, we're criticized. Well, we lost a little prestige. We got 9-inch guns. See, this is what they say. Unrest level is 6. There are popular protests in Germany against the high naval expenditures. Oh. Surprise, we're now at war with Japan. And they're going to bomb the crap out of us. Okay, well, the good news is we only have four cruisers there anyway. <laughs> so, here we go. That was a little unexpected, I, I must say. But here we go, they're just going to have a, a good run at us. Nothing we can really do. Max. Yes, we know. Max. Oh man, what class are these? Oh good, these are the Gefian classes. Well, that's fine by me. Here comes the Japanese destroyers. We don't stand a chance. They can just do whatever they want. They have four torpedoes, they're just going to get tons of torpedo damage off. Okay, there's the Gefion uh, herself. She avoided one torpedo, I think, but hit by another. We're actually starting to fire back. That's nice. Okay, here they come. I know, I think you have a huge um, penalty to actually hitting, though, when you're surprised. Yeah, this is probably not going to end very well for us. That was a lot of dud torpedoes. So far only one ship is sinking. Okay, that's very weird. Our torpedoes are hitting torpedo nets, <laughs> but they their torpedoes are not. That's unfortunate. Yeah, this is not going splendidly. We have one ship, the Gazelle, who's just somehow the closest one to them has somehow made it so long. Okay, I don't know what's going on here. Okay, good. Let's get the gazelle to face them so the torpedo runs are harder. Yeah, geez, that's like the 15, 15th torpedo that the <laughs> uh, Gefion has been hit by. We're, get, we're presenting a very small target, though, intentionally. We got a little bit lucky, of course, with some of that, but we're just going to head over to our gun turrets. Hopefully they can save us. I don't know what the Gefion is doing, trying to move into shallower water so her, she can sink in a better way. Who knows? So here we go with the Gefion over here. We know that the Gefion, the, sorry, the Gazelle. We know that the Gazelle has very sh poor sight range right now, but I hope that she's our flagship. The idea is just to stay close enough to our um, installations, or whatever, that we're in good shape. They can protect us. So how much longer do we have? Well, not long. Surprise battles, thank God. At least that's the one merciful thing about them. It will last too long. Hmm. You gotta really be careful about that with the Japanese. I forgot about that. Of course, I, I wasn't really expecting to go to war. Kind of caught me off guard. Okay. Well, should we go after them for some revenge? Why not? Let's just blindly assume that they've launched all their torpedoes. Since they're in line of breast mode, that's probably not a good assumption at all. Still, nonetheless, maybe we can avenge one of our ships. 
I wonder if the surprise for uh, the penalty to hitting with your guns, I wonder if that still occurs. Oh, wow. Looks like we got one of them pretty well. After you are able to move. So I wonder if it's still happening now. We might actually be able to get to a few of these to sink. That would be fantastic. So this guy is in trouble. Yeah, sinking. <laughs> okay, let's ignore it. Dead in the water. These ships look really old. No, they're 34 knot with at least four above. Yeah, okay, these aren't terrible ships. Great. So, obviously we're not going to be able to get our, you know, uneven trade out of this. Three light cruisers is still at three light cruisers, but it looks like we're going to be actually in pretty good shape to bring back a few ships. Hey, and there's another one. Oh, and those are some battleships that we probably don't want to fight. Yeah, <laughs> some actual dreadnoughts who are, thank God, not as fast as us. They're only 12... Oh, I cannot wait for our ships to fight these. We're going to bring all our battle cruisers over. I mean, we'll just bring everything over. That's the one nice thing about fighting Japan. They only have... Them and Italy, they only have, like, two places you need to concern yourself with. And that's nice. So I don't think we're going to stick around. We're just going to flee. Because those battleships... Um, basically, the opportunity cost... Of losing this is much, I mean the not the opportunity cost, just the cost of losing our light cruiser possibly, much 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 worse than the possibility of sinking their destroyer. I don't know if those are equally likely. In fact, they probably are. If if anything, it's more likely my light cruiser would be sunk. So we're just gonna throw this deep into the <laughs> deep into our port. Let our gun turrets try to do something. Okay, go away. They do have two different classes here. Yeah, but neither of them are very good. That one actually has four inch deck armor. Crazy. Okay, fantastic. So we were able to sink a submarine, I guess, at some point, um, and four destroyers. Basically, you know, it's obviously a huge Japanese victory, but we were able to reel back the loss a little bit. Okay, well, I think that that's... Why would that be a, something I would want to remember? No. Fair enough. I mean, if he wants to be upset about me losing a surprise attack, I suppose that's fine. So, what are we going to do? How do we choose to deal with this situation? Probably in a weird way. I think... I'm going to actually still retrofit these guys later. So let's move these two to Southeast Asia. Or maybe we should just keep them here and move all of our battle cruisers out. That makes more sense to me. Yeah, okay. Let's get all these ships over to Southeast Asia. That'll be the staging point. And we'll go from there. In fact, we'll probably move these as well. The heavy cruiser, Southeast Asia. Get everyone, scramble all the peoples. Now, what do we want to take with us? The Danzig or the Hamburg class? Oh, the ha I'm not too thrilled about the... <laughs> By the way, when I'm thinking about this, I'm thinking, which one can I feed the enemy? <laughs> it's not the right way of thinking about it. You should be trying to preserve their lives, but nope, no, I, I think I'm just going to throw these guys. Uh, let's get the Hamburgs over there. We'll save our Danzing class for protecting the Deutschland class. Danzig and Deutschland, Hamburg and Bondertan. Those are the pairings. <clears throat> Similarly, let's try to get rid of some of our old destroyers 
These aren't terrible though, you know? They still had six torpedoes, nine, 29 knots. Really, I'm not too worried about their performance. I'm hopeful. I mean, if they can sink a few ships, that's fantastic. Uh, just really fantastic. 900 tons, poof. <clears throat> okay, then we have the S13. It's not the best, but it is the second best and pretty good. I think we'll send these guys as well. So we're going to have a lot of ships in Southeast Asia very soon. Now the next thing we have to do is we have a ton, oh my gosh, a ton of minesweepers. I neglected to actually send the appropriate amount of ships to everywhere. So let's think about this. Let's send, let's keep six in Northern Europe. Then let's start sending two to all the other places. West Africa. Two to India. Let's get three in Southeast Asia and also three move to Southeast, uh, to Northeast Asia. That's not part of the attack fleet though. Now I need to get 17 of these. Okay, good. So we have 17. Hmm, I might have overdone the number in Northern Europe, but let's get, I guess let's get 18 to be on coastal patrol. Yeah, I certainly overdid the number in Northern Europe, but that's fine. Now the two remaining I'm going to send as part of the um, defense fleet. So I'm going to send them to Southeast Asia and hopefully I remember to move them along with the rest of the fleet when we actually start attacking Northeast Asia. <clears throat> okay, well, that's good. I guess that's 27 minutes in this video, so call that to a close as soon as we get... Oh, what foreign stations? Oh yeah, well... What if I told you that these battle cruisers are going to foreign stations? You probably wouldn't care. We only need one of them to be foreign station though, <laughs> for uh, it to cancel the requirement. So I'll do it just like that. Okay, great. So that's it for this episode. Thanks for watching. And well, I'll, I'll get us into a battle first. Another, oops. Wow, fantastic. That's a new, oh, oh wow, we, we damaged a dreadnought with one of our submarines. Ah, uh, it's not one of, uh, I'm sorry, it's none of one of our named submarines, unfortunately. Okay, here we go, let's see. Cruiser action, yes, we'll accept. Okay, so I'm going to say this is a perfect place for me to call to a net close, because if this is not an interesting battle, which, I mean, it's in my old uh, cruisers anyways, so if it's not interesting, I won't. I'll just record it, but I won't post it. So I'll see you back for the next episode where we hopefully mop up Japan in very short order and then proceed to hopefully engage the behemoth Great Britain. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next episode.